I was faced with multiple, multiple homicides. I was putting together an indictment charging Alpo with potential death penalty cases. I mean, we had a murder two blocks away from the White House. I'm personally opposed to the death penalty, as I've told the president, but I probably asked for it. Money, murder, politics. We know we ain't gonna let this guy go. Now they got me. Even though I was the shot caller and the boss, they knew we might be able to do business with this guy. The whole objective for me being in the game was to exit the game. Doctor's always going to drag you back in. Hustlers were always important to me because at the end of the day, they were the only people I sort of had any money. Now, people in the outside world would say that's not really success, but when you're from where we're from, it is success. Supreme team, was one of the most notorious conglomerates in the country. Supreme was the boss, Prince would be the underboss. They both are go-getters. They didn't want to be denied. These guys were juggernauts, bigger than life. They lived by a code. Get cars, get money, get rich. Jamaica Queens. You saw street corner CEOs propping up all over our city. I was selling 10 to 15 keys a week. We were branching out all over to Long Island. We was actually hip hop for real, you know what I'm saying? Crack was the engine that transformed the city. If Einstein grew up in the projects, he would have been selling drugs. I've been in jail for 32 years. You look back on your life. You find out what made you become criminal-minded. What happened? They didn't create the chaos. The chaos was here. These people were at the right place at the right time for the perfect storm. You don't want to fight a war forever. The longer you stay in that war, the greater the chance of you getting killed. Sex, drugs, money, and murder, my nigga. You know how we get it, my nigga. Still be painting them bitches, my nigga. Ripping that roll, who fucking your bitches? Sex, drugs, money, and murder. 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 Niggas, they never will hurt you. Uh, niggas, they never will hurt you. Uh, sex, drugs, money, and murder. Sex, drugs, money, and murder. Got the traps right, understand how to get that. Ran down on them niggas with a flip back. New and Boy, Bullets Gotti. So, I want to say this, man. Shout out to Troy Reed. Shout out to Nas. And why I'm saying shout out to Troy Reed is shout out to Nas. Because they got two of the best documentaries about to drop this summer, 2022. You got the Supreme Team documentary that's dropping July 8th on Showtime. You got the Alpo documentary coming soon. And I just want to tell people like this, right? When you think about hip-hop culture, you think about street culture, you think about dudes that set the tone in New York City when it comes to hustling, getting money. You know what I'm saying? You got to think of Kenneth McGriff, Prince, Black Just, Baby Wise, Green Eye Born. Bimmy, God B, you know what I'm saying? You got to think of the, the team, Supreme Team, the team that was basically the trendsetters of hip-hop culture and for hustlers, hustlers, they set the tone in this city. Supreme Team set the tone in New York City, especially in the 80s and the 90s. They set the tone. Now, Poe, Rich, AZ, Gangsta Lou, Pretty Tone Capone, Doo Wop, you know what I'm saying? 
we 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 gonna take it deep bonds, Daryl bonds, you know what I'm saying? T money, you know what I'm saying? L A, cause we gonna go back, John John, Craig O, you know what I'm saying? Those dudes set the tone, Boy George set the tone, Cheeky Boo set the tone, Cheeky set the tone, Bob Lemon. They set the tone in the streets. You know what I'm saying? For young hustlers. For your rappers. They set the tone. You know what I'm saying? They definitely set the tone because you got to look at it. That era, no mistake, there would never ever be another era. Like that 80s, 90s era. There would never be another era of getting money. Okay? There would never be another era. You know what I'm saying? When you got... Puerto Rican Jesus, where well, you got Ken Do Riley and, and, and Lou Hobbs, and these are dudes at Glades, you know what I'm saying? Fat Cat, you know what I'm saying? Like D Nice, all these dudes, Baby Sam, who, who I heard is about to come home, you know what I'm saying? These dudes set the tone in New York City to the point that when you look at a lot of the rappers, before the rappers was was getting that money, the streets was getting that money. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you see, like, Unique, shout out to Unique, Mecca Audio, he set the tone with Club 2000 and Hustlers. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I always look back, when you think about hip-hop, street culture and hip-hop go hand-in-hand. Because -hand. every, every hustler... And street and hip hop was connected. You know what I'm saying? It was connected. You know what I'm saying? Like Black Just is revered by many, loved by many in the streets. You know why? Because Black Just was what I call a trailblazer. And I hope when they do the Supreme documentary, they talk a lot about Just because Just was Harlem and Queens. He was the connection to Harlem and Queens. So when you see Rich and Ron and you see Bimmy, you see Gangsta Lou and AZ and Rich and all of them in pictures together, that was the connection. And then you see him with, with dudes up in the Bronx, Los and Cheeky and all them dudes, Infinite and all of them. You know what I'm saying? Cat from the Bronx, Hand Dog and all of them. Like, just was around everybody in the game, all the players. You know what I'm saying? Poe, like when niggas talk about Poe, Poe set the tone. Al Poe set the tone. Any way you look at it, I don't give a fuck what nobody say about Poe. Poe set the tone. They should call Poe a rat, whatever. Poe set the tone. He set the tone. He set the tone where... The way dudes was riding their whips. He set the tone of how dudes was dressing. He set the tone of that bike life. Even though L.A. and WAP and all of them, Grego and all of them, they was on the bike life. But L.A. was 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 early bike life. You know what I'm saying? L.A. was early bike life. You know what I'm saying? L.A. was bike life to the fullest. But Poe took that bike life culture to a whole nother level. And he set the tone. He set the tone. You know what I'm saying? It's no many... Like, when I look at, like, what they're about to do right now. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that dudes is getting to tell their stories. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're getting these stories. And I hope they do a Guy Fisher. I hope they do a Bill Underwood. Because that's, that's another era that need to be told. Bill Underwood, Guy Fisher. That's an era that need to be talked about. You know what I'm saying? That 70s era. Because, look... The hustlers that these cats was looking up to was a Nicky Barnes. Nicky Barnes was the biggest dude to come in the game. You know what I'm saying? In Queens, Pop Freeman was the biggest dude. But in Harlem, Nicky Barnes was the biggest. You know what I'm saying? You had Tito, Tito Johnson, who was big in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Who was like Nicky nephew. Tito was big. You know what I'm saying? You got dudes who was young cats like Tito. 
like Jesse Gray. Jesse Gray. Dudes don't talk about Jesse Gray. You know what I mean? Dudes are like, like, like Freddie Myers. Freddie Myers was, if you watch Crush Groove, the JB character is based on Freddie Myers. Freddie Myers gave Russell Simmons the money to, for Def Jam. When they did Crush Groove, if you watch that JB character, that was that character was strictly based on Freddie Myers, but he didn't use Freddie Myers' name. He called him JB. But it was based on Freddie Myers, who financed Russell Simmons, who he worked for, Freddie Myers. And he financed Def Jam. New York Freddie financed Def Jam Records. You heard Gene Dale talked about it. He owed Freddie Myers money, but he financed Def Jam Records. Now, back to what I was talking about with the print team. Like, the print team documentary is great for the culture. It's long, though, long overdue because, you know, they told a story on American Gangster. You know, they had the King, the King of Kings documentary. They did the Bimmy joint. But now that they got a docu-series, shout out to Nas. He been doing his thing with Mass Appeal on e A&E. And they been doing their thing on BET. And they was doing their thing on Showtime. Nas been doing a lot of great things with Mass Appeal and Showtime. Shout out to Nas. 50 got his thing going on on Stars. Nas got his thing going on on Showtime. So shout out to them two brothers right there. Holding damn Queens dudes. Like you already know, Queens niggas always been about that money. Always been about that chicken. And Nas is showing you. he Yo, rapping is good. But nigga, we about to get this corporate TV money. That's where that money at. That's where that bag at. Nas no, 50 no. So back to what I was saying. So... The Supreme Team documentary is an important documentary for the culture. To tell you why, because it tells you about a story, right? If you listen to Preem, right, people got all type of negative things about Preem, right? Preem story is like, if you go back and you go back and look at Carl and Hines story, right? Preem biggest mistakes, in my opinion. Was him fronting on e money bags, right? And you know, thinking son was like a son doula. And he wasn't. He he carried it the way he carried it, and he was official just like Prem was official. You know what I'm saying? But he was not having it the disrespect. And you gotta respect it. But with Prem not giving that man his money. It caused a lot of problems. But I understand a lot of egos was involved. But Prem was going to do big things. Prem had the Crime Partners movie. Prem was really trying to get into Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? He was really trying to get his big break in Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Even though Crime Partners went into um, straight to TV, straight to DVD, he's really trying to get into Hollywood. Um, Prem was say what you want. He was a smart man. He was well organized. His organization was the most organized organization in New York City. Um, Supreme Team, they moved like the Italian Mafia. You know, um, they was real organized. And they was about getting that money. You hear Glaze tell you the stories. You know what I'm saying? You hear Glaze tell you stories about, you know, Cat and all of them. <clears throat> you know? Like, look, Fat Cat. Had a good run from when he came home in 81 to 88. They had a great run until LeBron, until the LeBron Rooney and the Edward Burns situation, which Pappy Mason basically went berserk and 
messed up a well oiled organized organization where dudes could have continued to get bragged and there wouldn't be no problems. But when you got a hot head and somebody that's not thinking, they are gonna bring problems among the fold. And that's what Pappy Mason did. He brought problems. And he messed up an organiz a organized, a well-organized organization. And sometimes you gotta really, sometimes you gotta wonder, you know, a lot of these dudes were true leaders, had leadership skills. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm glad that, you know, they'll get the, that Preem gets to tell his story. You know what I'm saying? It's been a long time. Dudes have not heard from Preem. So Preem get to tell his story. Prince get to tell his story. You get to hear from these dudes, man. That they tell you, you know, what happened. You know what I'm saying? Because Prince got a story. Preem got a story. Prince, in my opinion... You know, Prane was the boss. He was just, he's the Michael Corleone. I call Prane Michael Corleone, and I call Prince Sonny Corleone. You know what I'm saying? Two different type of style of leaderships. But one played chess more, which was Prane. Prince was more off of impulse, but he, but he did what he did. He, he did what he did. You know what I'm saying? But that's what made him, that's what made both leaders, you know, different. But they was all about leadership, you know, and they were strong leaders, you know. And that's why when you watch that story, you get to see the trends that these dudes started. The whole Carhartt suits, the Timberland boots, the bulletproof whips, the bulletproof vests, you know, the, 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 the Supreme Team jackets. If we watch New Jack City, who you think that was based on? A lot of people said it was based on the Chambers Brothers. Yeah, a little bit it was based on the Chambers Brothers. Some of it was based on the council. But a lot of it was based on the Prime Team. They were based on the Prime Team. The way they had the jackets, the the way they had control um, of the buildings. Uh, and just the style of CMB. You know, Sam's a little bit influenced by Prem and them. But Prem was ahead of his time, man, hustling wise. He was ahead of his time. And he was he was strategic. You know what I'm saying? I, I wish they you know, I like I, I hope the story it talks about a lot. Um, I hope they touch on, you know, the relationship with Pac, because Prem had a relationship with Pac. A lot of people don't know that. You know. Um, a lot of people don't know that he was a he had a relationship with, with Shug, you know, and people don't know that, you know, so people don't know that, like, Prem, just the way he moved his movements was different from a lot of hustlers, you know, it was different from a lot of hustlers, but he was strategic, and that's why, like, with, like, with the Al Poe documentary, you know, Another documentary, you know, and I want to see that rooftop joint too. That's another one I want to see. But Poe's documentary, like, people got to give Poe his flowers. Poe was ahead of his time. You know what I'm saying? Like, Poe was ahead of his time. He was a trendsetter. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you hear him talk about, Jay-Z talked about how this is where he copped his bricks. You know, that's a true story. Everybody know who. Poe copped his bricks from, and everybody know the nigga he copped his bricks from was Jay-Z right-hand man. It's Jay-Z right-hand man right now, and he's big at Rock Nation. You know what I'm saying? But he was that dude on the street back in them days. So it, it has a has a connection with the industry and the streets. You know, like you look at Rich. Rich and Poe was trendsetting. Like when I listen to when I listen to um Troy Reed talk about like how they they started that white tee tank tops chain on the neck rolly on the wrist it started from Rich and Poe and A and them you know they started that you know what I'm saying with the 
with the white white sneakers, like you know what I'm saying, the sweats. Like they started that whole cool out gear swag, you know what I'm saying? And then you know where well, you got you know, the dudes that they was linked with, you know what I'm saying, the Black Justice, you know, Black Just had a great re bond and, 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 and rapport with these dudes, you know what I'm saying, Rich and Ron, like, people don't talk about Rich and Ron, you know, like, the connection with Rich and Ron, you know, you got the, you know, a lot of dudes that, when you look at that era of hustle, and you look, and then you see a dude like LL, Hello, Rock him and Big Daddy Kane and these dudes, they, they modeled themselves after the dudes that was getting money. You know what I'm saying? These dudes was rocking linen and, and silk and gold chains and popping Moet and Dawn Perignon and Cristal. Like, they started that. They started that Cristal, Dawn Perignon, Moet, Perrier era. It came out of, came from Rich came from Poe, it came from A, it came from all these dudes, Doo-Wop, you know, Black Just, Boy George, you know, Cheeky, you know, and Prem and Prince, and these dudes was like the trailblazers of hip-hop hustlers, we call, like, you gotta call them the hip-hop hustlers because that's what it is, you know, I wish down the line they'll do a documentary on just the streets of New York and the hustlers of that era where basically, you know, you just get that feel because it was a lot of, like, if they do a movie, it's a lot of hustlers that you could talk about from all the five boroughs. You know what I'm saying? But Harlem and Queens was neck and neck because they had the hustlers. The Bronx had the hustlers too. Don't get it twisted. You had Boy George. You had Chick, Cheeky. You had, you know... Hand dog, you had Kevin, you know, and, you know, others that came out of the Bronx, you know. And then, you know, in Brooklyn, you had D-Nice, what you call the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn bosses or the Brooklyn Dons. You had the Brooklyn Dons, which was D-Nice, Kendall Riley, Webb, um, Puerto Rican Jesus, uh, LD, Lou Hobbs. You know, they, they was they was the bosses, man. You know, Brooklyn, they was getting a lot of money, you know. A lot of money, man. A lot of money. And um that was an era that could never be duplicated. You know, never again, man. You would never see another era where it was about getting money. And a lot of them cats, they, they laid a transition into the rap game, you know, because you gotta look at it. Once the streets was over, hip hop was the new hustle. So when you look at Al Pope's documentary, you look at Supreme documentary, they all tell you hip hop culture was the next hustle, and it was basically idolized off of that culture because you got to look at it. Every hustler. When the 90s came in, every hustler was either trying to start a record label. They was trying to either get into the club business, like Peter Shoe did, like Unique did, like many others did. Or they was, you know, trying to get into just managing or, you know, being promoters. They were getting into the industry heavy. And... I think when you look at the guys that came out of that that 80s era, that was just a different type of era of hustlers because everybody that came out of that era was young adults hustling. Every last one of the hustlers that came from that era was teenagers or they were in their 20s, early 20s. But they were young adults hustling. Nobody in that era were, because you gotta remember the seventies era, and even you know Trey Reed breaks it down. But that seventies era was called the gentleman's game of hustling, the gentleman's game. The gentleman's game was most of the hustlers in the seventies were older dudes, 
they were either in their twenties, thirties, forties, and fifties. That's who controlled the streets of narcotics. When the late seventies, I say the late, the mid to late seventies, the majority of the guys that was coming in the game was in their teens, going into the and they, and when they got into the eighties, they be in their twenties. And that was the majority of the guys that was in the streets. Was in their teens and their twenties. So that's who controlled the streets of the eighties and the nineties. So this is how you get your preems, right? This is how you get your Rich Porter, LA, A Z's, you know, Prince in them, God B, you know, um, Green Eye Boone and Black Just and then you got Doo-Wop, Craig O, John John, and Harlem, right? You got these dudes, right? The Bronx. Like I told you, the Bronx. You got Boy George in them. You got Los. You know, you got many other dudes I could name that come out of that Bronx section that was getting to it. You know, they was getting to it in the Bronx. You know, on the hustling set. You know what I'm saying? And that's why they, these dudes' stories need to be told. Because when you understand that era and you understand that culture, like, where dudes was getting it, like, Puerto Rican Jesus, one of the flyest motherfuckers ever you can name that was in the streets. That whole one leg up you know, one leg up and the other leg down. LL started that that look because of cats like Jesus and other hustlers, but mostly Jesus was the, the, the godfather of that style. And he was doing that like early 90s, you know? You look at like Black Just, you know what I'm saying? Black Just was the, the 40 below Tim's rocker, you know what I'm saying? And his swag was the the waves to the side. Like, you heard what Nas said, the waves to the side of his dome definition of good, nigga, yo. Like, he, he started that whole swag of just was one of the flyest motherfuckers out there next to Rich and others that was in the game. You know, Black Just is another dude that I love that they'll get to tell his story because Just was, I call a nucleus. He held the team together, him. Bimmy, these dudes held the team together. They was the team. Without a Just, without a Bimmy, you know, the team would have, you know, it would have failed. They was trying to make it forward. The team, you got to look, the team had a long era, man. They had a long era, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Just and them carried that torch, you know. That's why Prem, Prem loved that man so much that he, you know, it cost him his freedom. Him loving that man so much. And that man being his brother. That he. He wasn't going to let that rock man. You know what I'm saying. He wasn't going to let that rock man. And you know. Eat money bags. Another dude man. Like. R.I.P. to eat money bags man. Respectable. Real dude. You know what I'm saying. But I always tell people. Never underestimate. A dude man. You know what I'm saying. And that was a. That was a situation of. Like I said earlier in the video, that a dude was underestimated. You know, just like in Carl and Hans situation with Pistol Pete. Hans est underestimated Pistol. He he didn't know who Pistol was. You know, and he fronted on him. But in that era, when we talk about that 80s era, man, that 90s era, man, it was about getting money, but it was also a lot of bodies got dropped. You know, a lot of bodies got dropped, and you see the cycle repeats now. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm glad that real OGs is getting to tell a story, because we want to hear from the real motherfuckers. Tired of hearing from these fake niggas. We want to hear from the loose sims. We want to hear from the the, 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 the Ken dudes. We want to hear from, you know, the preems. You know, we want to hear from the glazes. We want to hear from dudes that were there. 
poll. We want to hear from dudes that were there, that were doing it. We don't want to hear from you fake dudes that were small time, nickel and dime niggas. You wasn't, you wasn't doing it. Y'all wasn't doing it. We don't want to hear from y'all. If y'all wasn't, y'all wasn't on a level that these niggas were on, you can't talk. You was watching from the sidelines. Let the niggas that was on that level talk. You other dudes just stay on the sideline, man. We want to hear from the niggas that, that's telling stories, but salute the Showtime, salute Detroit Reed, salute to everybody that's dropping a, a street documentary on the real on the real goats of the streets, man. The MVPs.